it's a wintry uh, morning here in Kohima and of course uh, Kohima is known for its uh, beauty but let me first show you that early morning voters have already gathered here um, you know of course as Ratnadeep was also mentioning um, you know in the, the northeast is famous for women voters actually outnumbering men voters and that is something that we are seeing here as well uh, so here uh, you know of course uh, this is uh, this Kohima constituency is very important I come to you from the Tufima village where um, you know Chief Minister Nephew Rio will also be contesting so of course it's a high profile seat but let's first get in a word from um, some voters early morning voters here um, uh, ma'am if you can uh, speak to you uh, your name please Right. Ma'am, just one question. So, you know, it's... Sorry? Okay, so a lot of them don't want to speak here, but of course, uh, can I, are you a first-time voter? Yes. You're a first-time voter, so you're excited yes. to vote? Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> right. So, what are the issues really in your mind when you come and cast your vote today? What are, what are the issues you're going to vote for? Mm, for the women empowerment. Right. Yes. And for... Uh, the employability of the youths. Right. Yes. So the two very important points are raising. Very quick question. So generally, I mean, in Nagaland, for the first time, four women are contesting. So why do you think, I mean, women, uh, we, there are so many women voters, they outnumber men, but still uh, women candidates are very few in number. So, you know, that's something that's, uh, you know, I'm sure a disappointment. Uh, not really, because uh, I'm really proud that women also started to raise their voice. So really uh, happy that uh, starting with four candidates. So really looking forward that they will win this uh, election. And then for the uh, coming also, expecting more candidates for women also. Right, yeah. so Gargi, remember, Nagaland is looking to create history this time because there are four women candidates in the poll frame. In fact, we interviewed all of them. And <clears throat> they're, of course, focusing on things like women empowerment and uh, you know youth employability, as she said. Because, you know, here in Nagaland, remember, the, the most important issues very often become uh, political issues, like, a, like the Naga political issue, which you know a, a long-due issue here in Nagaland. Let me also show you something very interesting, that here... <clears throat> uh, you know, there's always a, the, the, the pastor of the local church who comes in the morning and conducts a morning prayer before the voting actually begins. So of, course, of course, the church has a major role to play as far as, uh, you know, these elections are concerned. Remember, over 90% of Nagaland's population is Christian. So, of course, we also saw in the campaigns that, um, you know, the BJP's uh, campaign was totally focused on a clear Christian push. Let's also try and get in a word from some more uh, voters out here. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, them have already cast their vote. Uh, sir, uh, your name, please. Uh, my name is Razu Volulia. Right. You have cast your vote. You went to uh, cast your vote. What are the issues really in your mind today as Nagaland goes uh, to polls? In order to show that voting is my right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what do you think are the, the issues of the people? Uh, you know, the roads, of course, have been a major issue here in Nagaland, underdevelopment, peace. What are the issues in your mind today? In order to bring change in Nagaland, right. I went for voting. Right. And what does change mean? Change in terms of? Change means, yeah, uh, development. Right. Uh, Naga political issue. Right. Etc. and etc. Right. So you've really summed up the, uh, you know, Nagaland elections this year very well because the three issues, the three key issues, Gargi, one is, of course, the Naga political issue. Uh, you know, of course, there are separatist groups here who demand a separate uh, state, a separate flag and constitution for Nagaland. So, you know, Amit Shah in his rallies uh, has said that that issue will be resolved. Other parties, including the Congress and the Naga political front, uh, they've also promised um, resolution to the long-due impending Naga political issue. Other than that, of course, peace, uh, reducing militancy is one of the most important issues as far as, you know, Nagaland is concerned. And in fact, uh, as far as both states are concerned, because in both Nagaland and Meghalaya, militancy and insurgency have been key issues. Now, as far as, you know, the numbers are concerned, very quickly, Gargi, let me just quickly uh, give you a wrap up of that as well. The BJP, as you rightly mentioned, is contesting an alliance uh, with the NDPP, um, uh, the National Democratic Progressive Party, and the CM phase is uh, Nephew Rio. We interviewed him as well and he will be casting his vote shortly is what we're being told and um, the other important thing to mention here is that 
Nagaland has a very weak opposition this time because the Naga uh, People's Front, the primary uh, opposition party, uh, is contesting only on 22 seats. So, of course, the BJP and the NDPP have a clear edge as far as national politics is concerned. The Congress is also looking to open its account this time. Last time it couldn't. And uh, this, of course, is going to set uh, the tone for 2024 because the BJP is eyeing two states that are dominated by Christians. And what we're seeing that in this far end of India, a new BJP is emerging that's pitching to be more inclusive in the run-up to 2024. Gargi.